Once there upon a time in ancient Mesoamerica, someone found a grass he called, Theozinti. He found out it was edible, but far too small to feed him and his family, and not very digestible. He then started to cross it with larger varieties, and realized that they became larger, stronger, juicier, tastier, and finally invented what we today call, corn. And then he found out that now he had something which was easy to digest and could feed him and his family properly. But he was not alone. In fact, several other crops we eat today were also bettered through crossings. Years passed and something called biofuel came to be. Originally hailed as a solution to the oil crisis, it was claimed to be renewable, green, carbon neutral, etc, etc. It didn't take long however for people to realize that many biofuels were not up to their promises. The reason was the basic matter from which they were made of, called feedstock, was far too complicated, expensive, cumbersome, etc. to process. The end result was a biofuel too expensive, not sustainable, competing with food, etc. Until a company came up with a radical new approach. Instead of trying to create methods to process obviously unsuitable feedstocks, why not develop feedstocks adapted to our needs? In another words, just like we turned the barely digestible theosinti into juicy corn, why not adapt feedstocks to make them digestible by our current biofuels technologies? We already started with one crop we think that totally rocks the house, sugarcane. In fact, Whereas with corn you get 4,000 litres of ethanol per hectare at best, with sugarcane you get twice. And if we also start to use the crushed residue, called bagasse, that number jumps to a whooping 30,000. And that's just a small portion of all the products it can generate. In fact, sugarcane it is being called the new oil. And you'd be surprised to know it is possible to grow at Europe by crossing it with a local wild grass to get the resistance it needs to grow in cold and dry lands regular sugar cane would not be able to. The end result is a crop variety which does not compete with food, can grow in degraded areas, and serves a huge number of purposes. This means we will be able to grow it in Europe where in the year 2020, 95% of all the ethanol we consume will have to come from inedible sources such as the one we are developing. In other words, we will be the sole supplier of feedstock for all of Europe's ethanol needs. Sounds exciting? Well, that is just the beginning, as we will also develop palm varieties adapted to our climate to provide us with biodiesel, and many others. It's a radical new approach, but only those change the world, which is ultimately what we are trying to do.